All right, we need to pull this rear master cylinder off because it's not letting the brake release. It is gooey, gooey, gooey. First thing I'm gonna do is get this cotter pin out, which suspiciously is not truly what it should be. It looks more like a nail. If I push the pedal down just a touch, there it is. That's what we had for a cotter pin. Piece of wire, brad nail, I don't know. I do know it's not the right thing. There's a washer on there, and then we'll slide our pin on out that attaches the brake pedal to the master cylinder. There it is. Now, let's pop this line loose before we take the rest of it loose. These bolts are already loose in the frame because we had to take this thing off. This is our rear suspension air inlet. We had to take it off to get the gas tank out. So. I figured this will be easier with the gas tank out. So we're gonna go ahead and mess with all this stuff. Now, I don't know how much brake fluid we're gonna lose or if there's any even any in the system. I know that master cylinder is not returning like it should, and that's the reason we're doing this. There's a crush washer there and a crush washer there on both sides of that line. We'll put those back in this banjo bolt. Really, we should use new ones here. And we should be able to pull our master cylinder out of here. There we go. Ta-da! Let's go over to the... Oh boy, you can really tell where it's been leaking. Let's take this over to the bench and uh, fix it. Alrighty, we got our rear master cylinder off. This is the reservoir. There is a touch of fluid in it. But we're going to remove the reservoir, but not this piece. I don't think I have an O-ring to go in there. If it... Uh, mm, it shows signs it's been leaking, so we probably ought to take it off. Around the world, it's actually coming loose. We do not want to break this plastic fit. Ooh, that worked pretty good. Holy cow. Yep. Pretty as a peach. Let's see if we can get these out of here. That'd be one. And the other one. Now, I'll reiterate, we do not want to break this thing. Yay! Minimal scarring. Got that off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'd say she was ready for a rebuild. My camera thing's upside down. It's hard to figure out which way to go. There's the O-ring we need to find. Get a new one of. Like I said, I got a new O-ring set. Pretty excited about it. And we will take and uh, see if we can get this boot down off here. Yeah, she's been leaking profusely into here too. I think my kit has a new boot. I got the genuine K&L kit here. She's a 32-4271. And hopefully all this stuff's about right. It's supposed to be. I got pretty good faith in K&L. I just don't have much faith in the sellers. Because K&L Supply was not selling this on eBay. Somebody else was, of course. So we'll pull that off there. Oh, she sounds very... Very bad. We'll grab a pair of snap ring pliers that are actually made for this. Our snap ring is right there. She is crusty. Got it broke loose. That's a good sign. There we go. That's out. Now the rest of this should just fall apart. It should just fall apart. Once again, it should just fall apart. It doesn't seem to want to fall apart. Now I'm going to move the camera, but my arm's probably going to be a 100% in the way of seeing anything. But there it is. And then I'm going to take and hold this back and give this thing a tappy tap tap. Look at that. 
that's out. All right. There's our master cylinder piston. Just the center portion of this. She's starting to come up. It's above the edge of the surface. A little farther each time. Woohoo! Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. She's about out now. There we go. There's our piston, our spring, our seals. It's, um, you'll never be able to see this, but I will. Dang, the board looks pretty good. If you will not focus on that, I'm sure. And then I'll shine a light down in here so you can't really see it. We're putting in a valiant effort for you to see it. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So we just need to clean all this up and then we'll use our new parts to reassemble it. Like I say, rebuilding these master cylinders really isn't that hard. If you have the fuel tank off your motorcycle so you can get to it easy enough. This is our kit here. It's our piston, our seal, our actual piston seal up here. This is a seal to keep it from coming back out there where the rod goes in. Yep. That looks good. I think we're gonna fire up the ultrasonic cleaner and wait for it to warm up and throw this in there and give it a ride. I went ahead and made an executive decision that we might as well pull this rear caliper off and go through it. Considering how bad the master cylinder looked inside, I can't imagine this thing being a whole hell of a lot better. So we may have some issues with this bolt because it looks like somebody's had some issues with it in the past, but at worst or at best, depending on how you look at it, we don't truly need to pull that bolt out. So let's remove this caliper. We'll start removing the brake pads and then we'll pull the pistons out of it and see exactly what we got inside this sweetheart. That's just a spacer. I'm gonna roll this this way so I got some room to work on this bolt. This bolt. Good golly. That baby's tight, tighter than a bull's butt in fly season. Get that baby off there. This little clip holds two pins in place. These pins can be a son of a gun because they like to seize inside this caliper body. This is one end, that's the other. And they like to seize up in there. Let's see what our looks like today. That one's not too bad. Neither is that one. I am pleasantly surprised already. I've had cases where those are super duper stuck. Let's set a screwdriver underneath there and go ahead and give those the old tappy again. I'd hate like heck to actually go get a punch. But I guess I might. I think this one will be sufficient. Mmm, that's peachy. One brake pad. I want to go ahead and tap those on out of there. So I'm going to kind of hang on to this. Give it the old taparoo. Same thing on the other one. There is the inner brake pad or the outer, depending on how you look at it. Get these pins out of here. We'll want to give them a coating before they go back in. All right, there are those. Now we gotta get these pistons out of here. There's a couple of different ways to do this. I am real fond of the air method. So let's try something different before we just jump to that. I saw these on Evil Bay and they just seemed like a good idea. This goes in and grabs the inner portion of that piston. I'm sure these are a knockoff of actually a good tool. This does not seem to be very well thought out. Mm. 
yeah, that's not really doing its thing much. We'll just set those aside. See if we have enough air pressure to pop one of those out. Probably not. I can't imagine this working without running the compressor. No. All right, we'll be back when the compressor's done. All right, we got the air compressor pumped up a ways. And I've also taken the rest of the rubber stuff off this thing and taken it off the bracket. Added a little heat to it. And we're gonna apply some pressure to this and see if one of the pistons will pop out. Those pistons are fairly stuck. Well, she's bubbling brake fluid, so it must be getting hotter. I don't want to launch a piston out across the shop. This is a bit awkward. There's one of them. All right, we got one piston out. Oh, good, the other one started moving. So let's use our, what I thought was gonna be super cool pliers, which I'm not so sure is, and see if we can actually get this other one to come out. So far, not so. There has to be, this has gotta be a knockoff of a good tool. It's such a good idea and such a poorly executed. Yeah. Yeah, this fulcrum point is too far away from this. If it was down here more, it'd have a better chance. So we'll do this the old school way. What's that? Well. All right, we're gonna peel out the dust seal, which looks like it has totally had the meat. So I will need seals and O-rings for these two. And then pop out the actual piston seal. Then I'm gonna make sure there isn't a ton of crap underneath that piston seal. It feels pretty good. I'm sure this seal is what's blocking everything up. This caliper is still rocket hot, which you might guess by the smoke coming out of it. But you just never know how much you can see on the camera. I'm going to force that back into its groove. Get it setting right. Then we're going to reinstall this piston. This may seem a little, the piston's hot, a little counterintuitive. Really, it's not. I'm gonna clean that off a bit and set him back into his bore. There, now it slides in and out. Then we're gonna take and put a piece of a board in here like this. And that piston can come out against that piece of board and then this piston will have to come out after that. So let's just see how this works out. All right, get our air gun. We'll set this in here and lightly bring this thing out to it clamps that board. That was unexpected. Here's the other piston out. Is 
the hardships. Turns out this is the same piston back out. There we go. This one is what we need to hold in with the board. So we turn this over right about there. Okay, that's against that. We're gonna aim this down like this. See if we can get that other piston to pop out. Certainly enough, it did. Now this other one that we've already had out should be way easier to get out. We'll try our worthless as tits on a boar hog pair of pliers here again and see if we can get this thing to come out. Tools that do not help just hurt the situation. If they don't do a good job, they're pretty much worthless. Like those. I'm gonna grab the very edge of this thing where neither seal will ever see it and see if I can work this out of here. There we go. Piston out. We'll take these other O-rings out of here or the seal and this O-ring. Pop those babies out. Pop this seal back out again. We'll give this thing a ride in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. It's not as bad as I thought it'd be, but they were sure hanging up. You can see how much junk there is on here. We'll give those a ride and I'll bring you back when we've got everything cleaned up and we're ready to reassemble. Got it cleaned up. I want to chisel this part out a little bit just to clean it up with my screwdriver scraper. I'm back. Today we're using Honda DOT4 brake fluid. Happened to have some around and it is a fresh bottle. We'll pop the cherry on this thing, get us some fresh stop juice out here, and we want to coat our piston and stuff in this. So it slides in nice and easy like. And uh, cause this is all pretty much bone dry from being in the parts washer. This is our master cylinder piston. The way this is gonna work is this is gonna be set up in there. So this is like this. And then this spring is gonna be in the end of here. And this is all gonna go into the master cylinder in this direction. Then we have this seal to keep the fluid from coming back out the backside. And it's going to sit on here just like this. This fluid, this seal needs to have its lips facing inward so it holds the fluid in. So we're going to put this onto here and then we'll assemble the rest of this sweetheart. Just like that. Now I probably looked like I struggled to beat heck on that and I did. It is a son of a gun to get right. So anyway, what we end up with looks like this. So we'll take that. We want to take and get just a little bit of fluid down inside our bore here. Just to lube it up. Then we'll take and put our spring in like so, but I think we'll uh, Make sure this cap is in the right place on it. This is going to get stuck down this hole just like this. Then this is going to go in here behind it. Mm 
And then that seal has got to go down in that hole as well. I'm going to lube it up just a bit more. that's going in right but yes it's going in right and it's popping back out like it should like that we'll take this dealer bobber the actual push push, push pin this is the uh, push pin that sits in here this is going to go in here as well and there's a snap ring I do believe we got a new one with Oh, geez, she jumped clear back out. I'm telling you, she's hoppy. There's our new snap ring. Let's go ahead and set that on there. We're going to feel, and the sharp side of the snap ring is up, and we want that to go up on here as well because we want it to catch as good as it can. Now, I'm going to take and put this in the vise so I can hold it still and then assemble this. Hang on just a minute, and I'll bring you over to the vise. Well, I'll point the camera towards the vise. Alrighty, we'll take that, and then we need our piston to go in here, and that all needs to be shoved down like that. Then our snap ring, I'll turn it around this way, get our snap ring pliers, wherever they may have landed, and put them under our snap ring, make it smaller so it fits down in there. Now, it's not caught yet. It's just sitting in there. All right, our snap ring is in. And we forgot to put our boot in here. So I think what I want to do is just get this thing off the end and then slide the boot on and put the clevis back on. I think that would be better. The boot, the clevis, and this thing is too big to fit through there. So we're going to take this off because I don't want to undo all this. So that's what we'll do next. And we'll slide this down and get it over that nut ever so carefully. Then that is supposed to sit in a groove on that nut like that. Then the other end needs to sit down inside the lip on the master cylinder, outside the lip on the master cylinder. There we go. That is on. I think that'll work just fine. If I can keep the rod straight. There we go. We'll put the top piece in. Now we need to find this an O-ring about this size. I think that'll do it. And there we go. This baby's ready to go back on the bike. We're going to reassemble our caliper here. The first thing we need to do is make sure these grooves that the piston seals and also the dust seals set in are clean. You can see there's a bunch of junk in this one. I'm just going to take a pick and dig around in here and break all that stuff loose. We'll 
little bit right there. That'll keep those seals from sitting in there like they should. Go ahead and dig on this one a little bit. Gonna give it a little puff of air, blow it out. See just a little bit more down in there where this actual seal would go. Oh yeah, that's much better. Whoa, that was almost my finger. Well, I'll be dipped. I think that worked pretty good. Yeah, I think that did work pretty good. These are OEM Honda stuff. I just like using them better if I can. This is a 4209, 45209166006 for the actual seals. The big fat square ones like this. There's a second one, and then these are the dust seals. As you might suspect, we're going to use just a little bit of brake fluid to lube these as we put them in. Put a little brake fluid in our cap here. That would be more than enough. Dip a finger in there and just liberally apply it all over this O-ring. We're going to take our big ones and we're going to set them back in these grooves. Now, at first, you're not going to think all that O-ring is going to fit in there, but it does. So we're going to take my finger, set it in there, and hold it in the bottom of the groove, and work it around both ways and just push the top in. That one went in really, really well. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. These calipers are the same. Both pistons are the same. Not all calipers are, but most of this old stuff I work on is. But if you get into modern sport bike stuff, they may be different sized pistons depending on the caliper. Now this is just the dust seal. And it will fit in there too. You just got to kind of love it in place. That one's set in there straight. I figured one of these is going to sit in here kind of anti-goggling and we'll have to straighten him out. But doesn't seem to be the case. These sweethearts are rolling right in place. Get my finger in there, right? There we go. That was a little crooked, but he finally set in place. So there we go. We got both of our seals in. Our pistons are in relatively good shape. I'm going to put just a little bit of brake fluid on here as well. Put it around my thumb. I'll set it in here and just kind of love it in place and not let it tear those O rings up. If something goes wrong, you can feel it going wrong. Just got a feel for it. Don't go slamming stuff together without getting a good feel for what's happening. Put a little on that one too. There we go. It's a nice fit. Get that sweetheart in there the right way. These are brake pads and you can see this one's been against the pistons. And this one was the outer one. So we're going to go ahead and put those back in the same way they came out. Like that and like that. All right, we got our pads in place. We're going to turn this around and our pins to hold the pads in go in from this side. They go in from the caliper side. We're going to take this one pad back out of here for the moment. Set the other pad in. Push him down into place and slide the pin in just a little bit. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Get this baby caught. Push our pad down and get our pin slid in just a bit. We'll go a bit farther with that one. Then this one, we're going to make sure he stays clear over here against the caliper. And then we're going to go ahead and slide him into place. That one's in there. Push him on in. There we go. Then we'll take this one. Poke him on through there. Slide him through. And then these have grooves on the back side. 
that this keeper sits in. See, I can show you this the best here. Make sure we're looking at the right place. And then these sit over the top of these and just slide into place, just like that. That way they can't come off. It. Torque it down. There we go. Now our pads are in place. We still have our pins to put in. This pin. It's going to sit in this hole like this. But then it's going to have a pin on each side of it, a uh, keeper on each side of it, a seal. And that'll keep the junk out of there. This hole doesn't look too bad, but this pin, she needs some love. Like so, we're going to give this thing a little lube. Then we're going to slide it through here. Try to get it to slide past that thing. Then we're going to make it slide all the way through this one. And get this little rump out of the way over there. Then we're going to set this one in here. And we'll take this piece. Set it down in the groove that's inside the caliper there. Work, work, work even in place. This boot also has a hole in it, and we'll have to replace him. We just don't have him right now. And I want to get these brakes put back together. Not we're going to ride it, I just don't want to lose all the pieces to it. Now this one's going to kind of sit in the groove on its own, and this one, we're going to push the pin through, and then we're just going to Work it down over there, like that, until it sets in the groove. That's what there is to that. We're going to put just a little bit of lube down in there. Some of this little dab of do you grease. Just a bit more than that, I think. Then we'll take a little screwdriver and kind of work it down into the hole. We just want enough down in there that it'll kind of lube it up. Don't need a ton. Don't need a lot. And wipe him off a bit. All right. Now we'll put our boot in. This boot is also torn. Seems like somebody who worked on this last was kind of rough on things. Work that down on here. And this is another sign they were rough on things. This bolt is tore up. Now, this is going to set back on our caliper here. And it is essentially going to sit like this, like that. So we'll flip it over, get our bolt started in here to our caliper. It's not tight yet. Then we're going to slide this in, kind of wiggle it and love it into place to get it past the groove. Then there's some air trapped in there and you want to kind of work it down. You can hear it kind of farting and carrying on to get the air out. Oh yeah, that was good. And that's going to be pretty much out. Now that rubber thing is going to attach to that bolt right there. We're going to roll this around and we'll put our other one in. This works a little bit different. It's going to go in there. Take our 12 millimeter wrench. Get our socket out of the way. Torque this down. Then we'll grab our 14. Flip this sweetheart over this way. And we'll tighten this one down. Now, once we have everything in place, <clears throat> there we go, so the caliper can slide back and forth. That allows for the pistons to come out whenever the pads start wearing. They'll come out and the piston, the whole caliper will actually move over as the, as the pads wear out. These pads are in great shape outside of being 100 years old. But that's how that whole system works. Now that's ready to go back on the bike. Guys, thanks for watching. We got our rear brakes pretty much rebuilt here. It's just a matter of installing at this point. Really appreciate you tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave some comments down below. I can take whatever you got. Tell me what all I did right, what all I did wrong, and what you'd have done different. Because I guarantee you there's a lot of opinions out there. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless.